we're going to talk about ideas mm. and intellectual properties and what the hell are they and how do you turn, you know, like TJ, your man TJ said, you know, uh, fire into something or light into something that's exclusive, into something that's property. Um, today we'll talk about that. You know, today will be your sit on a park bench and, um, you know, philosophize about, you know, really the, the nature of ideas, the nature of creativity. We'll also talk about Kirby and we'll talk a little bit through um, the bit I asked you to read in Lawrence Lessig's book. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this and just kind of like, you know, gets you percolating a little bit because I hopefully, hopefully Kirby got you perked, perked a little bit just kind of thinking about this stuff. Uh, maybe for the first time ever or maybe for the four millionth time ever. I don't know where your mind is. So salute. Nothing like a little Canadian whiskey to set it off. But um, so here it is. This is a Venn diagram. And. You know, I told y'all that this is not a law class. Like, this is a legal culture, sort of legal theory, cultural legal theory sort of class. And if you look at this Venn diagram, right, we have these three things. We have corporate culture, we have legal culture, and then we have, like, mass culture, folk culture, subculture, fan culture. They're all kind of, like, in this area, right? And the Venn diagram, where they all come together, where it's all poop brown in the middle, is where we have remix cultures, right? So to kind of talk us through this, just like these cultures that collide, because this class is called remix, remix cultures, right? Um, and we know now, we've seen Kirby, we know like some of the greatest remixers, and by greatest, I mean the people that remix the most are companies, are corporations, right? Corporate authors, Disney especially. And they've made bajillions of dollars off of remixing, but... You know, when we look at something like legal culture, and I ask you, what's legal culture? Well, could be many things, right? Could be Congress, Senate, senators, you know, um, judges, um, you know, judicial process, uh, legislations, slip bills, um, and the whole culture of that, lobby, lobbyists, right, government, all that stuff is legal culture, right? And then we have corporate culture. Now, corporate culture is you know, man, they're, they're, they're probably more connected to the legal culture than us, right? Like, uh, you know, we, 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 you and me, we aren't like the constituents um, for most Congress people and senators, right? Their constituents are those with money, with, a, with, pow with the actual real power, right? We, we want to talk to our congressperson and we write a letter and their college intern reads it. <laughs> and that's just how it is, right? But um, really corporate culture is the corporate culture of creativity, of corporate culture of authorship, corporate culture of ownership, of, you know, um, of purchasing, of acquisition, right? And the, the legal culture and the corporate culture are kind of really, you know, really playing with one another or laying with one another, right? Like the corporate culture is able to lobby very easily. They have lobbyists that, you know, work on their behalf, trade organizations, et cetera, et cetera. And then through all this and their interminglings and stuff, there's us and there's mass culture. That's pop culture. That's your Swifties or, you know, your people who love Star Wars, hey, you know, or at least Star Wars before Disney started really screwing it all up. Uh, but I really love Star Wars, you know. Um, you know, those sorts of, those sorts of things. And then there's like mainstream popular culture, right? And then we have the more folk cultures. These are like the more, you know, uh, subcultural things or non-recorded cultural acts. And we have subcultures, which are your more underground, independent, subversive, challenge the mainstream, challenge pop culture, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, this is the thing is like, you know, uh, most of what we'll talk about uh, content, books, movies, music, um, uh, uh, trademarks like uh, brands and logos, um, all that stuff, you know, that comes from the corporate culture, right? And the laws that uh, largely, you know, govern what corporate culture creates, right, at the, at the, at the legal level, level reflects their form of authorship, right? That's something to just kind of think about. And then there's us, we're the consumers, right? We're consuming what the corporations make, we're beholden to the laws that are made in the legal culture that are lobbied by the corporate culture, right? And then we buy these things, or we stream these things, or we buy these computers and we get these softwares. And, and these things allow us to just be simple, passive consumers and watch stuff, but most of us, we got phones, we got our own, you know, freaking, uh, you know, uh, 
we got our own media companies, right? Our own TV stations, our own YouTube channels, our own, you know, social media, you know, whatever. And, you know, uh, you know, we take from that corporate level, we take the technologies and the text, so the movies and films and the technologies that they give us, and we do shit that's different with them, right? We, 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 we may not just be passive adults. We may con start as consumers, and then we use that, you know, starting point of consumption as as really product our starting point sorry consumption as our starting point of production so i always say this for me you know i'm a dj um i make beats or made beats you know dabble in that sample based stuff right when i go out digging for records i'm not necessarily looking for stuff i want to listen to front to back i may be just looking for like six seconds or two seconds or a drum break or whatever something that i can use right so anyways the whole thing is that there's this whole relationship between these these cultures and and when we you know are impacted by the legal culture that governs our consumption and what we can produce right and we're using corporately made texts and technologies and stuff and then we do something totally different innovative and super fucking cool you know and then guess what you know uh let's see flossing right backpack kid you know flossing went like massive i don't know why but you know we're memes okay <laughs> you know so that's that's why like you know what i'm saying like that was like a subcultural thing that then gets incorporated into the mainstream right and then they sell it back to us in this form and then we and then we consume it you know this crystallized corporate form and then we do something different with us and they go oh wow well, well. and the corporations come around and you know but then the laws that govern what we do they they actually help to enforce how they're made right and the the, the when we're talking about trademark patent and um copyright those laws often reflect um corporate authorship right um, at the behest or at the sort of detriment of the consumers, that, which is us. So that's just to kind of talk us through the cultures here. And we'll be talking about all these cultures throughout this whole course um, in, ver in various ways, okay?